A while back, a movie called Late Night with the Devil came out on Shudder, and I unfortunately was not able to watch it at the time. Funny coincidence, but Late Night with the Devil also happens to be the title of a book I'm writing about my old high school girlfriend. <laughs> she was the worst. Thankfully, the movie is more readily available, and I was able to check it out on Hulu last night, and I want to give you my quick thoughts. Let's begin. Late Night with the Devil was written and directed by a couple of brothers, the Sea boys as I'm referring to them for this one time only and never again. Hey, before I jump in, if you wouldn't mind just subscribing to the channel, it would mean a lot to me. It'll, it'll just take a second, if you haven't already. All right, let's begin. If you haven't seen this movie, I'm not gonna beat around the bush, you should check it out. I had a really good time with the film. It's an hour and a half long, it's R-rated, and it has a very unique storytelling premise. Found footage is obviously nothing new for the genre, but the Sea Boys still found a way to put a nice twist on it. I used Sea Boys again, I'm not done with it after all. Because this whole movie is gonna take place in one central location on the set of a midnight show called Night Owls. And it's hosted by Jack Delroy. Delroy is played by David Delsmolchen. If that name doesn't mean anything to you, congratulations, you're in the same boat as everyone else. This guy's been around though. He's one of those dudes that's always like a fourth or fifth string supporting actor. You'll find him in a Christopher Nolan movie once in a while, just kind of hanging out, lounging in the background. He's always very good at what he does. He just doesn't get a lot to do until now. This is very much his movie. And the plot is very simple and straightforward. Jack Delroy is in trouble ratings wise. His star was on the rise, but his wife got ill. He took a year off. And when he came back, he was just in a slump with sweeps week coming up. Oh my God, sweeps week, say that five times fast. Sweeps week, sweeps week, sweeps week. Nope, can't do it. All eyes are on Jack to see if he can make this show a success. And his big play is to bring on a bunch of crazy supernatural guests that can commune with the evil spirits, that can read minds, that can debunk fraudsters. He even has this poor sweet little girl named Lily come on who supposedly has a demon in the passenger seat. This film takes place in the late 1970s, which seem to be all the rage these days. I swear I've watched four or five films in a row now that are taking place in the 70s, but uh, it works. It is a fun retro period to go back to. And so the movie is gonna mimic that. It's a four by three aspect ratio, lots of static and filters added. You got grain, you got distortion, all to bring you into that world, into that time. The story is presenting this like you are watching found footage of a live taping that was previously lost to the public. But outside of that, there's also behind the scenes footage never before seen. The live taping stuff, perfect. Effortlessly done, it looks great, it feels like you're watching this on TV. The behind the scenes stuff, however, really have to turn the brain out for this. It's very crisp high res visuals in black and white, but that's not fooling anyone. Who the hell has cameras like these and why are they running so often behind the scenes at perfectly timed locations? You do have to switch it off a little bit. Turn off the brain and go, okay, I'm along for the ride. Let's just have fun with it. And I was along for the ride and I did have fun with it. David does a terrific job leading this circus, but I have to give two shout outs. Really loved my boy Gus. Jack's wingman, Gus McConnell, is fantastic in this movie, turning on the charm, playing to the audience. But Ian Bliss as Carmichael is my absolute favorite here. I love his swagger. I love how cocksure he is, debunking all of these different things people are putting forward. You have the mind reader going into the audience, doing the cold readings. And Carmichael systematically goes through and beat for beat destroys every talking point these people have, every trick. That is until the movie starts to progress further and things get zanier and more out there, which will take me into some spoiler territory. So to put a bow on it, I really dug this film. Not perfect, obviously. I think the ending could have used some work for sure. But overall, this was a very unique, fun, easy watch. Something I wouldn't mind revisiting to grab a little bit more information along the way, because I do think there's more here than I probably got out of it the first time. All right, with that said, let's talk about some of the spoilers. Really just the final act I wanna focus on. The girl Lily has been possessed by a demon who we are gonna see in the final act. She's gonna come out, her face is gonna get all gross looking. 
she's gonna levitate off of the ground in a chair, and eventually she's gonna kill every single person in the audience, including all the people on the stage, except for our main star. Jack Delroy is spared because he made a deal with the devil. This film goes into some of the weird cult shit, where they worship this deity, which also has the face of an owl, hence the name of the program, Night Owls. Jack offered up his wife, Minnie, for a shot at the top. It was established earlier that Minnie had cancer, but she really didn't. Her soul was traded, and Lily just happened to be caught in the crossfire at one of these cult events where they did a big sacrifice. And so the demon attached itself to her because it had nowhere else to go. Then it started wreaking havoc in the studio. It snapped the neck of my poor boy, Gus. <laughs> he actually foreshadowed this moment earlier when he said, uh oh, I hope you're not gonna make my head spin around. Carmichael is burned alive. And poor June, who's essentially Lily's handler, had her throat <laughs> sliced by her own crucifix. Now, it was pretty obvious to me when they put the sacrificial knife on the table next to Lily and Jack that this was gonna be utilized later, and it was. Jack goes through kind of the history with the show, reliving some of the events of the past where he ends up next to his wife, dying in a secret room in the back of the cult. And she says to him, you need to make the final sacrifice and let me go. He takes the knife, he stabs it into her, only to realize that he killed poor Lily on that set. Now, this movie's got a lot of different interpretations I think that could be had. My thought here is the demon convinced everyone to kill themselves and then convinced Jack to kill Lily. Now, what happened to the demon after that? I don't know, did it go into Jack? Can it just float around and find another victim down the road? Does it even need to house itself anywhere? Th these are things that are not very clear on a one-time watch. And it's possible this isn't even how it really went down. That's just my interpretation. But I love these types of movies where there's different explanations for what could have occurred. The film's not that gross, but there are a couple small gross parts, like the worms coming out of the guy's stomach, which is all implanted in their head. It wasn't particularly scary. It wasn't that gross or vulgar. Just a really well-made watch. A few people, both online and offline, said, Adam, you should check out Late Night with the Devil. I think you'll enjoy this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts either way. And so there you have it, my thoughts. I did enjoy this one. Even if the ending felt a little, I don't want to say rushed, but kind of separate from the rest of the film. Like I needed more to get me there. But again, kind of like Smile 2, which I also really dug, these movies beg to be watched more than once. To get that full scope of the story, it might be there. I'm just not getting it all pieced together quite yet. Let me know your thoughts though. Did you check this movie out? Have you been a big fan for a while or did you absolutely hate it? I wanna hear from you. Again, please think of subscribing. I post movie reviews every single week, multiple times, along with rants, roasts, occasional live streams, whatever I feel like doing. And I would appreciate if you stuck around. I also have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, that I'm just starting to build up. And if you love what I'm doing, think about becoming a supporter on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. It's the best way to show support to the channel, and I would appreciate it. Take care.